emotional side for you? I know that you lost your big support a few days ago. Um, how do you, how do you feel? How do you felt that? Uh, man, he was much more than a jiu-jitsu coach. He was uh, my MMA coach and one of my best friends. Um, I feel good that I got the win, but uh, I feel like it's not enough. I don't feel like I performed as well as I could have. Uh, I got emotional walking to the cage, which we try to prevent. We practice walking to the cage. Um, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have the coaches with me that I did. Um, the walks to the cage this morning before the fight um, to prepare for the walk to the cage tonight, I feel like that really helped me prepare to get out there. Um, without getting too emotional. Um, I didn't want to have a dump before I got in the cage. Uh, I still had a little bit of a adrenaline dump when I got in there, but uh, I have good guys in my corner. Um, even though Robert Fellas isn't here uh, yelling at me, uh, everything that he ever said to me is still in my head, so um, it's still very fresh in my mind. So you actually played out the walk yesterday? Uh, no, uh, today before the fight, James Cross brought me in the hallway because I told him I was nervous about walking to the cage. Um, I'm an emotional guy, I'm a passionate guy. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want that to affect my fight. The only time I really have my emotions in check is when I'm in the cage. So uh, I didn't want to change from that. So before the fight, we put my walking music on. We did a countdown. We bounced around. Uh, we walked to the cage just like we would have before a fight. Uh, we stood at the cage. I took my shirt off. Uh, hugged my coaches. I walked in the cage and uh, I started doing my little dance that I like to do. So um, it wasn't the first time tonight that I walked to the cage and, and prepared for that. So again, you know, that's, that's all my coaches. I, I have three great guys in my corner and, um, you know, that, that pushed me through tonight. What has this week been like for you? Just like checking, I know you've been asked about it a lot, but to go through all this after the passing so, you know, so recently, what has it been like overall? Uh, man, it's, it's been pretty rough. I, uh, from the Canada fight, uh, he was supposed to fly out with me Tuesday. I, I pushed his uh, flight back to Thursday because uh, he was going to be with Brian Caraway. Um, Brian Caraway's fight fell through, so he called me, asked me to move the flight back to Tuesday. That would have been another $700, so um, he said, don't worry about it. Flew, flew, to, flew to Winnipeg, and um, you know, I didn't hear from him, so I knew something was wrong. Um, since then, uh, I've been kind of on a little bit of a self-destructive path. I came out to Vegas early uh, without my coaches, and I shouldn't have done that. I, I, I screwed around a little bit. I wasn't doing the things that a, a professional athlete should be doing. And, uh, you know, that was a mistake I made. I, I should have never came out here without my coaches. Um, as soon as my coaches got here on Tuesday, uh, they slapped a little sense into me uh, and, and put me back uh, on the right path uh, doing the things that I should be doing to prepare for a, a professional MMA fight. Do you consider pulling out of this fight? Um, James Krause told me that I, I shouldn't take the fight right away in Winnipeg. Um, and my words to him was, I, I don't want to waste my time, and I don't want to waste Fallis' time. I put in a two-month training camp with Robert. I spent every day with the guy. Um, I, I, I took in a, a bunch of knowledge, uh, a bunch of love, a bunch of support, and I, I didn't want to waste that. So, uh, you know, I, I came out here. Um, like I said, I was screwing around a little bit, and as soon as he got here, I, I told him I felt like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken this fight. Um, I, I cried a lot every day, and, uh, you know, he told me, he said, you wanted this, you asked for it, um, you're a man of your word, and, and you know, I, I did what I said I was going to do. And, Again, it, it's all it's all my coaches. They they're the guys who who got me through this. I, I couldn't have done it on my own. I, I really believe that. How um, would you describe now how you're feeling afterwards after this whole emotional adrenaline that you're feeling with this year? Well, I feel like uh, my adrenaline kind of dumped when I got in the cage. My arms were dead. Um, I was gonna bail on the choke. I, I was I was letting go of the darts, and James Krause said, "That's tight. Stick with it. Chase the hips." And you know, again, he knows way more than I do. And uh, my best attribute in fighting is, is I can listen to my coaches. Um, I put all my trust and all my faith into those guys. I know they know what's going on. So as long as I can just keep my mouth shut and my ears open, I feel like I, I can beat anybody. How much did having your old coaches here, Icy Zach, I mean, James Krause, how much did that help you kind of pull through this? You talked about them pulling you out of the self-destruction. Uh, it, it was everything. Like I said, uh, my birthday was Christmas Eve. And then Christmas, uh, I was here by myself. Uh, I was just drinking a lot, staying out all night, not sleeping. Um, those guys saved me. It's not the first time, though. It's, it's nothing new. Um, that's what friends do, and that's what coaches do, and uh, I'm lucky to have those guys. Can I get a drink? <laughs> what did they say to you uh, that kind of pulled you out of that funk? Uh, man, they didn't have to say anything. Um, I knew what I was doing wasn't right, and uh, I, the whole reason why I love Robert Fallis so much, he holds his guys accountable. Sorry, I had a drink. He holds his guys accountable. You know, he he uh, 
he's on the phone every day. What are you doing? What are you eating? What are you drinking? Uh, how much are you sleeping? Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why I came up here to be around him. Um, he's, a, he's a full-time guy. He's a full-time coach. After the Ultimate Fighter and Demetrius Johnson, uh, I was done fighting. I was on retirement. I, I figured, you know, it just it wasn't for me. I fought the best guys in the world, and, you know, the very best guys in the world, they beat me. So I thought maybe uh, this wasn't for me. And, you know, Robert, Robert believed in me fully. His, his only goal as a coach was to create a world champion. That's what he wanted to do as a coach. And, uh, you know, he told me that I was the guy. And uh, he believed in me enough for both of us. So that's why. What did you take into the octagon from Robert? Ah, uh, man. Everything he ever said to me is, is, is still in my head. Um, but, again, you know, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm good at taking orders. Uh, I just wish that I would have listened a little more, and I, I wish that I would have had a little more time. But uh, I feel like uh, the time that I did have with him was, was very special. And, you know, I never questioned anything that he ever said to me, and I wouldn't question anything after what he's done. Is there anything that you'd like to do with a tribute for when you uh, up in the UFC flag? Uh, just stick with it. Keep working hard. Um, not screwing off so much. Um, trust in my coaches. Trust in myself. Tim, there was a moment, I think it was either the first or second round, I'm sorry, which one, did he bite your hand or there was a moment, there was some grappling, what happened there? Uh, you know, I said, my hand was stuck in his mouth and I said that he was biting me and uh, he laughed and he said, uh, and I wasn't biting you, I just, I had my mouth open and uh, I said, well, why do you have your mouth open? He was like, all right, so we both had a little <laughs> bit of a laugh, no big deal, I don't, I don't care, I mean, it, it, even if biting was legal, it's not, it's not that big of a deal, it's a fight, so sometimes you get bit, sometimes you get kicked in the nuts, sometimes you get poked in the eye. That's just part of this game. Uh, you know, I'm going to go back and talk with my coaches and uh, try to get my mind right. Um, uh, go back with my team and uh, you know, uh, hug on my daughter and love on my daughter a little bit, and then you know, we'll make a decision from there. Are you sticking around at bantamweight, or are you going back down to flyweight? You know, this wasn't a really good judge for me at Bantam, or at Bantam weight. Um I came into the fight in Canada for 125 pounds. I think I got there at 146. Um, I came into this fight at 134, so I came into this fight way lighter than I've ever came into any 25-pound fight. But uh, you know, I wasn't taking my nutrition serious. I wasn't taking um, I wasn't taking myself serious, um, and uh, you know, I feel like it showed. I I was dry in the fight. My mouth was dry. My my arms were dead. Uh, I wasn't really feeling it. My feet weren't working like normal, and uh, I think that's because I wasn't doing the things that I need to be doing uh, for a professional athlete. So. I might give Bantamweight another try. I would really like to see, you know, what happens between uh, T.J. Dillashaw and Demetrius Johnson. I feel like I can, I can do the flyweight. Um, I just need to make uh, a little more sacrifice and a little more adjustments. And you know, again, just listen to my coaches. They, they know what they're doing. Um, that's the great thing about this. I have such good guys. Like, I don't even have to think. All I have to do is, is do what I'm told. And, and um, I feel like if I do that, then uh, I can make the weight and I can beat good guys. Tim, the guy you were supposed to fight. Uh, no, I'm not surprised at all. Um, the thing is, is yeah, I was short notice and uh, he didn't make weight, but I fought John Dodson on six days notice. Um, they asked me over and over again, are you sure you can make it? Are you sure? They let me know pretty much. If, if you don't make this, then this is your only shot. And, um, you know, I agreed to it and I did what I, I did what I was asked. So, um, no, I'm not surprised at all. He, he came into interviews bragging about how much bigger he was than me, which he wasn't. I stood right next to the guy. He's not bigger than me. Um, but uh, he talked about how much bigger he was, and then he didn't make weight. So he's, he's getting exactly what he deserved. And the fact of the matter is, if you're 13-0 and 0 and not already in the UFC, then, then what's the issue? I started my pro career out with zero wins, two losses, and one draw, and I got in the UFC. So he has the record. He has all the, the attributes. Uh, there's a reason why he's not here, and, and there's a reason why he got cut. Have you been pretty vocal about some issues about pay and whatnot? Uh, do you feel better? Do you, is this something you need to work on and speak to the UFC about? Um, man, again, I was I was a, a little bit of an emotional wreck. Um, I, I worked hard to make the weight. Uh, I sacrificed a lot of time away from my kid. Um, I, I had a really expensive training camp. And for the first time in my life, I, I spent money on a training camp like I thought a professional NFL player would do it. I, I stayed in really nice places. I ate really, really good quality food. I had people, you know, doing my laundry and stuff for me. I, I For the first time ever, I felt like this is what a professional athlete is supposed to live like. And then I, I didn't get my paycheck, so I was upset. And uh, what I should have done is uh, I should have been a man and I should have talked to him face to face instead of running my mouth on Twitter. But again, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm a fighter and I'm an emotional guy. And I, I felt 
I felt like uh, they weren't taking me serious. Um, but, you know, Nick did a good job. I, I talked to him. He, he made it right by getting me another fight. I, I asked for it. He made it happen. And, um, you know, I, I love fighting in the UFC. And I feel very, very blessed and very, very grateful. And, uh, you know, Dana White and Nick and, and Sean Shelby, I love those guys. I, I enjoy them. Um, I, I'm right where I want to be, and I have a great time. Uh, being here, and, and I don't want to burn those bridges, and, and I don't want to be the asshole that that cries every about every little thing. But they said that they don't give their guys show and win money when when opponents don't make weight, but that's not true. It, it has happened. I saw Ian McCall got his show and win money um, after his opponent missed weight, but uh, and he got his show money whenever he made weight, and then didn't show up for the fight himself. So I just felt like it was a, a bit of a double standard. I mean, I may not be that big of a name, but uh, you know, I come out here and I fight my hardest, and uh, I put a lot into this, and. I want to get as much out as I put in, and I felt like that wasn't happening. Um, but they made it right. They did. They fulfilled their end of the bargain, and um, you know I couldn't be happier. Speaking the way you do, uh, last question about your coaches and also about Rob. I know that you're still in the middle of your own career, but have you thought about a post-fight career and perhaps coaching down the road? Um, man, I, I try not to think too much into the future. Um, I, I want to focus on the now. I'm, I'm a live in the moment kind of guy, so uh, I'm just I'm really trying to enjoy myself and. You know, I, I had a five-year plan for the first time in my life. I had a, a set plan, like, this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to be here with Robert Fawis. Um, I'm going to work to try to become a world champion. And for the first time ever, I thought that that was a possibility. And then, uh, you know, it was a pretty huge blow after after his passing. And um, I feel like uh, I feel like I owe it to him to at least give it a shot. So I'm not focusing any, anything on the future other than uh, my next opponent. And then, um, you know, then I'll go from there. Sure. 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 How are you? Hey, Roger. Things are really close. <laughs> a couple weeks removed from your last fight. Yeah. In retrospect, how, how do you feel about it? what went wrong? Uh, you know, I feel like <clears throat> coming to the UFC, moving up through uh, the weight class, fighting the top tier of the of the division, uh, it's just a bit of a learning curve. And um, every fight you go into. You have, you have to know that it's you can't compare it to any of your fights that you fight in. Um, but that's easier said than done. And um, <clears throat> there, is, there are things that I take away from it that I did really well. And there are things that I take away from it that I could have done better. And um, I was improving on my boxing, and I went, really wanted to prove to myself that I could stand and, and throw. And I'm really proud of myself for doing that. But there are other things that I wish I could have done. And, um, you know, that's why... That's why I have some more fights in my contract to do that. After the fight, I noticed on uh, your Instagram stories, yeah. which are often very entertaining, that you were very emotional. You were talking about like you know, how's your family and spending time. And I don't know if there was a deeper <coughs> meaning to all of that, or if you were, you know, there was one in your car. Do you remember? It was like five in a row, and there's black eye. Yeah. And uh, so, what what were you trying to say to your fans? Or what were you trying to express? Um. Sometimes I think that. As a, like an, as an athlete and as a fighter, I can be consumed and really selfish about my career. And um, at the beginning of my camp, my father-in-law got really bad accident and um, was in the hospital. And um, they were telling us that he wouldn't be able to walk and um, doing all his rehab and stuff. And it really put things into perspective for me because I get to wake up every day and get out of bed and and do what I love and. Um, I just think it's important to sometimes take a step back and uh, appreciate the things you have and appreciate the people that are in your life and, and to cherish every second you have with them. It's really, really nice. How is your father in law now? Um, he is <clears throat> he's doing better. He's um, at home now and uh, we're still working on the rehab and we're we're just we're just trying to be in his corner because he has a big fight ahead of him. So we're all just being in his corner, being in his corner, and just trying to be supportive. You also said before uh, the fight that after the fight against Rose, you kind of had to re, sort of uh, regain your love for mixed martial arts or martial mm -hmm. arts. Um, how are you processing this loss? Do you feel the same way, or I, um, I know the reason why I lost. Um, I'm actually I'm, I'm proud of myself for the way I fought, but I know that the reason why I lost is because 
I, I was restricting myself from some of the things that I could have done. Um, and that does kind of mean my, my passion for, for fighting. Um, it's like a constant search for who I need to be as a, as a fighter. And, uh, and the minute you think you learn something new, something else falls off. And that's why I love martial arts so much is because it takes so much for it to all come together. And um, it was kind of a hard pill to swallow. I've never fought, I've never lost two in a row. And um, it's just, it's not something that, that settles well in your stomach. Um, especially on the holidays, you want to come home and spend time with your family and, and celebrate. And But uh, that's life. <laughs> and um, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I know that I went out there and I did well. Tisha's, you know, a, a highly ranked fighter. She's going off to, to, to fight big names as well. And and I'm just um, proud to say that I, that I got in there and, and came down with it. So. When you look at the growing state of the women's divisions in the UFC, you came from Adam Weight. How much do you think that that division would, I think, be a good one to have here in the UFC? Um, I think they should add a lot more weight classes, especially for the women, because uh, we, we hold on to weight differently than men do. And if you give um, the women a division to flourish in where they're not having to struggle to, to add muscle, to, to cut weight, then um, they're going to show up. You know, I, I think we, we've done a good job at, at, at coming into the UFC and, and showing that, that we're just as passionate as, as everybody else. Give them the platform to, to, to show their skills and abilities, and they're going to show up every time. So. Would you ever consider going back to Adam Wade if it were here in the UFC? Um, I don't know. I, I guess um, you, you, you can never, I'll never say never, um, but I do feel comfortable at 115. Um, I worry less about cutting weight and worry more about training, and I think that's more important, and I, I'd rather I take that advantage. But um, like I say, never say never. If the division opens and it's a good opportunity for me, then then we'll see where it takes me. Now that twenty two is or twenty two divisions on twenty two divisions is, is coming up, I feel like it's sort of been like a tale of two years for you. I mean you you become like a superstar almost on M T V and body armor and stuff, but in the cage it hasn't gone through. How would you describe this year? How, how, does it feel like um, a mix of emotions? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, um, Fighting is my passion, martial arts is my passion, um, but I also understand that it's important for me to take advantage of this platform that I'm on so that I can build my brand so that when I'm done fighting, I have um, something to fall back on. Um, but with that being said, I I look forward to getting back in the win column and, and climbing back up the ranks and, and making that my glory. Also, I'm going to hold up. I like to fight, um, March, if I can. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching the bout tonight between Carla and uh, Cynthia. I think either one of those girls would be a fun match between them. Um, also, you know, I know Felice has been on a four or five win streak. You know, her and I kind of grew up in the sport together. I think that would be an entertaining fight. Um, but at this point, I just want to get in the win con, so, so we'll see what they give me. I, I believe that, um, well, <clears throat> I might be biased because Holly's like one of my best friends, but um, I know I know what she does behind the scenes that nobody else gets to really see, and to me, she's already the GOAT because I, I get to see the work ethic. I get to see her, you know, um, on her highs, and I get to see her on her lows, and um, in all instances, she is an amazing person, an amazing athlete, and somebody that I aspire to be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I like it. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a good uh, atmosphere. I know uh, it's uh, it's also friendly. But uh, whenever you know we we shook hands, you know, in, in backstage, and whenever we face off, you now you know it's getting it's getting real. You can see now it's uh, time to fight. Uh, soon it's gonna be in uh, less than four weeks. You know, so you now it's uh, it's uh, it's really that time. I saw that you tweeted uh, a picture of the, the split screen, and you were saying like, are you gonna let him talk? Because you know you know what's coming. Did you feel like he's Talking himself up and ask you. He's talking a lot about next opponent, possible opponent. He's talking about some matchup. He's saying he's a random guy. You know, he doesn't see no, no, no opponents when, whenever he's gonna face somebody. But he has to know uh, somebody specific is facing him. You know, so it's gonna be me. I, you know, that kind of I'm bringing some 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 kind of strength. You know, some kind of game plan and stuff. So you better watch out. How much more intensity did you feel after meeting with him? You said the stare down, it felt more real. How, did you feel that intensity as well, like in the fighting blood kind of No, thing? it's not too much. It's not like uh, that kind of intensity, yeah. but also for me, you know, you're training, you stay, you spending your time in the gym every day. You know, I'm not going out, I'm not doing crazy stuff. So now that I'm, I was traveling for the UFC in Vegas for the press conference, now I like, oh, it's more like now uh, I remember also, it's, uh, it's the UFC world. So it's not my world anymore. I'm I'm I'm, I'm arriving in, uh, in that that kind of uh, setup, and now I'm I'm like I know I'm Vulcan no time. I'm not Vulcan anymore. I have to be you know that that fighter right now. It's, uh, I have to fight soon. How do you like the extra spotlight? You've had it. We saw you in New York do these kind of uh, you know appearances here with the media. You did it again here in Las Vegas. How do you like I guess welcome the attention? I mean uh, we gotta we gotta go along with it. It's uh, it's really good. It's really it's good for everybody, for for the UFC, for me. You know, it's a, it's perfect. Uh, it's a good platform, and uh, and uh, you, you gotta you gotta you gotta play with it. Uh, you made note of the fact that you're sticking around for the fight because he's on the plane home to spar. Why did you decide to, to stick around this weekend to fight it in three weeks? Because I have a lot of uh, my all my week is is set up. You know, uh, I did all the the training I had to do. Uh, with my people before, and now I have some some small stuff to do, some small adjustments also, and uh, that's it. I mean, uh, everything is, uh, is, uh, is is in place. The only training I had to do uh, here was uh, a few a few pad work, uh, do some running. So basically, it's stuff I can do on my own. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's, uh, it's it's not gonna matter that that much. I think that was your first two fight press conference, right? In the yes, exactly. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was different. You know, finally, uh, you were the guy that, that is uh, there, you know, and uh, some of my friends were like texting me a picture, like, oh, it's crazy that you are with this kind of fighter, you know, we're always watching on your TV, but definitely it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing. You know. It was interesting, your transcripts were sitting next to each other, two French speaking uh, fighters. I noticed you guys speaking to each other. What did you say to them? What was the conversation about? Oh, we just like laughed a little bit about uh, some stuff, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good because we we are both like French speaking people and uh, now we are fighting for the belt at the same time and uh, it's a it's a it's a huge step up for for, for uh, you know for us. Earlier this year you challenged Alexander Gustafsson. Do you see him as the first uh, challenger to your title after you win? He's definitely the, the number one. He has the, the the place, but he also stayed inactive for a long time and he's the number one in the ranking and stuff. He's been you know like. Best, but what, what I saw also is uh, OSP right now. Uh, I, I guess unfinished business with him uh, because of you know what happened, and uh, he's been fighting like for he's gonna be fighting four times this year, so it's he's, uh, he's in, in a great shape and uh, looking really good. Definitely. Considering how unattractive the weight class is right now, like negotiating the next fight, are you just happy that you've got someone in the light heavyweight division like Daniel? Yes, um, Daniel took the fight, and that was a really risky fight for him, you know, because uh, of my name and uh, my style. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a really explosive style. Anything can happen any second, so it's a really a dangerous matchup for him. And uh, it gave me definitely gave me a, a big chance to prove myself, and uh, I, I thank him for this. You know, like, the way you're dressed right now, changing the the, the, the nicknames and everything. Are these all are these all kind of conscious decisions that you're making with regard to Champion, you're headlining pay per view, and it's all about the buy rate and what you can bring to the table and how you're doing your media. Are these all things that you've made consciously to try and 
step up that game became a part of, of I mean you have to you have to also <laughs> leave it leave it to it and uh, my my life is uh, has been improving, you know, I'm I'm getting more money, I'm able to do some stuff, so definitely I am I'm just getting better and more about myself. <coughs> I was talking to Daniel sure. after the uh, presser, and he said that uh, he believes that you were wearing lips in your shoes to look taller than him to intimidate him. Is that true? Are you wearing <laughs> higher shoes? No, he was just a small guy. That's it. You know? <laughs> okay. So you, you you felt the size difference, though. The height uh, difference. You know, it doesn't really matter. He's a wrestler, so he has to be lower than me. You know, in this game. So I'm a striker. I want to be also a longer, uh, have a better reach. So it's all about how you're gonna play on the fight day. What's up, guys? What brings you to Las Vegas? Uh, I'm here for a UFC fight. <laughs> yeah. You're here for Cynthia. Cynthia and Rick Glenn. Rick Glenn and Cynthia, they're both on the card. So Rick Glenn's actually next. Okay. Which is like an awesome show. So what's it been like kind of bringing up that new generation? I see that you guys have been hashtagging it like new school. What's it like uh, working with that? New school. It's been awesome. I mean, and, and the coolest thing is, uh, you know, I was hanging out with Andrew Coyne, who you guys don't know yet, but you will know, and uh, he's been with me since he was like 11, and he's now cornering Rick Glenn, and he's, uh, we've got Joseph Morales, who's been with me since he was nine, and, and he just had a big win in, in Mexico City, and, and getting ready to, you know, go to 10-0, and, and so it's kind of crazy to see the whole, the whole thing come full circle, and, you know, the guy stepping up at as a coaching staff also we have like you know, so many so many talented guys in the room helping the next generation it's all about passion so it's been cool to see that you've always been busy as an entrepreneur what else do you have on the horizon right now oh man i've got all sorts of stuff that i've been working on um some entertainment stuff and, and of course the team and you know expanding that i've been talking about doing something in china which is going to be pretty exciting it's not really out there to be talked about yet but um you know, there's there's a lot of cool stuff that's happening, and um, just kind of enjoying it and, and staying busy. I get up early, go to bed late, and, and work all day. Is the China thing fight related? Yeah, we, yeah, we're gonna do some, you know, help develop some talent out in China for, you know, do a team, female to male China type of situation. Wow, I think. So that's gonna be cool. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I, I went to the last event over there. Okay. We've had some guys come out to us, and actually, our, our team sponsor Mountain Lion Aviation. Jim Wilkinson, he's a, he's a good friend, but also uh, someone that supports our team. He has a lot of uh, relationships in China as well. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing to see UFC going over there and, and, and the sport expanding, you know, to the most populated portion of the world. You know, it's exciting. What do you think of the talent there? It's really good. Yeah. I think when I was over there, I think five Chinese fighters, and they all won, and they all had tough, tough fights. It wasn't like they are Given cupcakes, you know, it was, it was tough. It was tough competition, and they're, they're talented. I mean, that's that's the martial arts is is uh, you know kind of born there in, in, in that type of in that part of the world in a lot of ways. So it's cool to see it come full circle. Would you consider doing something like that in India as well? Yeah, talking about India. Uh, I mean, both those places. I mean, fighting such an international thing. I mean, it's the most primal thing, but but the most common thing, I mean, everybody loves a good fight, and everybody has probably gotten in some sort of conflict in some shape or form, so it's cool to see the whole world kind of bring people together, I think, which is awesome. So I understand Cody's back, you know, top one of the big organization in Thailand, right? The yeah. Baby Moon, if you will. Baby Moon, yeah, yes. him and his, his, uh, his wife, I mean, she, she goes every single year, so he, he got to tag along this year. I'm just wondering how he's doing amongst one of those, you haven't heard much from him, like, how, how do you had a chance to talk to him. How's he assessing life with the not being champion? Um, you know, in his mind, he's still a champion. You know, and, and, and once a champ, always a champ. But he he definitely is hungry. It was really cool to see him directly after the fight, the way he reacted. I mean, because he's he's not the easiest guy in practice. You know, if somebody gets a better of him or there's something he, he he's you know he can he can throw a little fit on occasion. To see the way he handled a loss like that was awesome, and just spoke a lot about him as an individual and. I was excited for the things that he said directly afterwards, which were, you know, all about forward thinking and about getting on to the next, the next path and getting that, get that strap back. So, uh, I mean, he's what, 25 years old and 25 or 26, and you know, he's excited. He went out on vacation and just ended up training the whole time, which, you know, he was trying to relax. It didn't work out. You know, it's, that's pretty common, I think. But 
it was cool to see him just grinding over there on vacation. You seem to have a very special relationship with Sage One Cut. You were yeah. in the corner and he won. Uh, what did you make of his performance? <coughs> and what would you, you know, I know he has another fight now, but like, how, how are you sort of mapping out? Is he doing better than you thought? I mean, you guys seem to oh, be absolutely. Funny. Sage, I mean, you know, as far as a, a positive, like, energy, I've never really met anyone like that. He's, he's, he like brings joy wherever he goes. He's like Santa <laughs> with abs, you know? So uh, it's, it's really cool to have him in the room. I mean, he just, it brightens the mood. Everybody loves him and he, he's, you know, he's genuine, you know, his whole, his whole, you know, the way he comes off is real genuine and, and uh, he learns super fast. I mean, it's crazy. So it's just find those little bits and pieces to fit into an already great skill set and great mindset and, and good genetics and, and a lot of hard work. And I think, you know, I'm encouraging him, you know, he's too nice to say he's going to go get the strap, but uh, that's in his mind. And I don't know, you know, at, at what point does somebody just decide they want to be a champion? I think he's probably had that for a long time, but I, I'm, I'm encouraging him to voice it because I think he can be a world champion and, and we're on a path to do that. So, um, you know, it's, it's been awesome to see him progress and, and I think, uh, you know, he's going to be a, a world champ. Is he Yair Rodrigo still doing work for you guys? No, yeah, Yair just came out. For, for a couple of weeks, and uh, he, he talked about possibly coming out, but I know he's got you know, a pretty good situation where he's at. He was talking about possibly bringing a trainer and doing some camps, but uh, we're friendly with the Yair, and he's welcome, but uh, he hasn't made the move. Along the same lines as, as Sage, have you been, um, I don't know, maybe surprised a little bit at Cynthia's progress? I mean, she just beat her fifth win in 2017. I'm not surprised at all. I mean, Cynthia has been beating up guys. We used to, you know, when a lot of the European guys would come in that hadn't had a great wrestling background, uh, we'd always, <laughs> you know, baptize them with, with uh, a beating from Cynthia. You know, she, she's, she's been a, a killer in our room for so long. And to see her, you know, finally getting the recognition and the opportunity is, is awesome. Because it wasn't like, you know, she's been hidden on our, on our, our map. We've already known she was there. But she was fighting 125s, and she broke her arm in the same place, I think two or three times. So she was kind of, and she also had this thing where she wanted to get an amateur title before she turned pro, which I was like, I mean, I was trying to talk her out of it, but uh, I was like, she should have been pro a lot earlier than she was. So she's gonna be a world champion. She knows it, and that's exciting. How, how have these new guys that come into the gym and you put Cynthia up against them, how they react to that? They fight their ass off, because they have to. And uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's uh, I mean, she, she's as good as anybody on the ground, and she has that intensity, and she's strong, so, um, you know, she can put anybody in the world to hurt. You talk about championship mindset. I find that interesting. That, that, do you feel that there's a lot of fighters that, that don't think of themselves as champions, and at what point do, do they have to vocalize it, or when, when do they become that, have that mindset? <laughs> I, it really, I think there's a lot of fighters that don't see themselves that way, and that's a problem. I mean, if you're not in, if you're not in the sport to be the best, then you know you're just you're on the wrong path. And I had to learn that myself. It was a growing process for me, making goals as a you know as a college athlete, as a high school athlete, and never writing down to be a champion was kind of weird. I'd always want to get to the state tournament and place and be an all American, and and it was something I learned after college that you have to voice it and you have to think, I want to be the best and I'm going to be the best. And so sometimes it's just relaying that message and, and, and printing it on them uh, you know, throughout the workouts. I mean, we have a real good energy in our gym. Um, we want everybody thinking that, so it's a process. Who's going to be the next champion out of the gym? Well, there's a lot of guys that are going to be champions. We've got Joseph Morales, uh, who we just, he's been with us since nine. You know, he's looking for the championship. Benito. Lopez, or, I mean, I could name all my guys that are going to be. For somebody that you have never heard of and is still an amateur, uh, Kaleo Romero, he's a kid that is a state runner-up in California, and, I mean, he has to, I, I talk about this all the time and at the end of practice, but he has to be, you know, he's always in the gym. He, he called me, and, he, and he's like, hey, it's Saturday night, and he's like, Uriah, I just set off the alarm. I didn't realize everybody left. I'm in the shower. And I left, I left. I was the last one to leave, but the alarm's going off in the gym. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, so that kid right there, Kaleo, is uh, is a kid that, that I have high hopes for. And he's, he's, like I said, he's an amateur. He's about to turn pro. Nate, what's your prediction for El Rio Esparza? Is he 
but did not break. You know, Asparza is is tough, but I just think it's going to be. I don't would normally say this, but I think it's going to be a one sided affair. I'm not sure where uh, where she can better better Cynthia. I mean, Cynthia's solid on her on her stand up. Her stand ups are getting better and better. And if you know she wants to take her down, that's going to be the world of her. I think you know we're looking at a world champ. So I'm in my mind, Cynthia's going to show that she's you know heads and toes. Heads and shoulders above her. Yeah. Thank you. That was a pretty dominant performance tonight. You know, how would you kind of rate that performance uh, in your own mind? Uh, it was really good. You know, I knew that this movie was really, really tough opponent. I got him with a really clean shots, and he could he keep a fight. You know, even when he was got knocked down, he was like not even not even trying to survive, but he was trying to submit to me. So. I was kind of surprised at that, but I think it was a, a good challenge for me, you know, and I could show why I'm here fighting with the top guys in the world. You know? Where do you think a performance like that puts you next? I mean, do you have an opponent in mind? Do you have a roadmap of what you'd like to do next? Uh, not yet. What I know is that I'm, I want to fight with the best, you know. I think that that picture put me with the, in the, the top front I mean, Of course, before I was ranked top 10, and now I just put the top 13, so I think that I'm top 10 again. And I don't know who's going to be my next step in my career. Right now, I just want to enjoy that, that victory, you know, and then sing with my team and see what's going to be the, the next step. But I'm pretty sure that I want to wreck that guy. And as I said before, I'm all the way up, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking high, of course. You had him very hurt at the end of the first round. Are you surprised how, how tough he was and survived all the way through all three rounds? I knew that he was a really, really tough opponent, you know, but that was kind of surprising. Three knockdowns in, the, in one round, you know, and uh, a big cut, and he still, like I said, he was not just trying to survive, but he was trying to submit me even when he was out of the fight. So it, this got me kind of surprised, but I keep the game playing, I keep cool, you know, I didn't try to rush things, and I think I did a good job. What was the game plan for him? Uh, the game plan was basically uh, put my weapons on top of his game. I knew that he is a very solid ground game and he likes to put the rhythm in. So I didn't want to let him put the rhythm in the fight. And being a taller opponent that he is, I knew that body shots would be a good way for getting victory. And that was I did. You know, uh, instead of trying to look for his head first, I was trying to look for his body first, make him slow, and then look for his head. And I think that I did right and got the victory. Is this going to be your first fight against Soraya in 2016? What was your side of the story? Can you um, give us your side of the story you know, as to what it was being like dealing with that and trying to get over it? Yeah, it was kind of, it was a really, really tough moment of my career, of course. I didn't expect that. I could expect to be hurt and anything, but not the doping stuff. And this happened with me. I don't know if you know the case about how old the amount was really low amount of cholesterol. Everybody, those other guys, as soon as they saw my, my case, they, they said to me, hey, this is something strange and everything. And, but it is what it is, you know, we have to, the process have to, to keep going the way it is. So it was a really tough moment of my career, but I think the tough mom moments is what makes us harder. And I, I grew up a lot in that time that I was uh, away from the octagon, you know, not just as a man, but as a martial artist, you know. And now I'm back, I'm back, and, and I think that I'm back uh, a better martial artist and better man, and ready for a big challenge. You know, this idea that uh, flyweight division in some ways is taken over, do you feel like uh, it's a little stale? What, what were you trying to say that? Because, of course, you have the champion who's been so dominant. What were you trying to say? I'm trying to say that I'm here to put some fun in that division, you know. I think they, they need a, a new blood and I am the new blood, you know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I have uh, all the skills that I need to to go, as I say, all the way up. And of course, I think step by step, you know, I have a, a big road into the top of the division. But I'm pretty sure that I can put a lot of fun in that division, you know. Anyone who makes sense here? Or just give it a name? I know you talked about rankings. Yeah, right now I don't have a, a name, but as I say, I want to rank a guy, of course, but for now I, I want to enjoy the division. It was like a really tough year. I think I deserve 
the time for enjoy a little bit, enjoy the new years. And then I'm gonna sit with my team and see exactly who's gonna be the next step of my career. But as I said before, I want to win as many, of course. I'm just curious. I know you're now with you know, Eduardo Alonso, you know, guys like Damian Maya around you. Um, for a young guy like yourself to be around people who have been around the sport for so long, how has that helped you? Yeah, uh, helped me a lot. You know, and it's not just now. Before that, I was in the Novo Union. I I was there for five years, training with Renan Barão, Jose Comida, Aldo, Flavio Yanta, you know. I always try to to train with the best guys and all the champions. After this, I, 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 I went to Jackson Wink, and then I have a very, very good training over there. And now I'm in Damien Maia, Vila da Vita, in Sao Paulo, and I think I just, right, right now I just go to it's my home region, you know, I'm really happy over there. I think I have the best training camp for, my, for a fight, you know. Everything was really, really specific, and I'm just honored to be where I am right now. Uh, I was just wondering, a uh, big fight coming up, obviously, Mark Hunt. Uh, what's that feeling like to you to face somebody that you've seen as a veteran of the sport? Excitement and uh, appreciative of the UFC is going to give me a chance to fight a legend, live a legend. And, uh, I wasn't expecting it so soon, but I'm happy to do it. And I'm looking forward to put on a show. I mean, my hands have gotten better. I know his hands are very dangerous, but my hands, plus my wrestling, it's been a great fight. Is he somebody that you looked up to as you came up through the sport as at all? Or? I mean, yeah, I've always respected Mark Hunt, but I don't have his style, obviously. But you can't help but respect the guy who's been doing it for as long as he has at the level he has. Like, I know he doesn't have the biggest record, I mean the best record, but everyone knows he only fights the best of the best. So why I feel recognized, like, they give me my cut, so he means something. What do you think of, uh, what do you make of what he's been through with the, the back and forth of the UFC and the last kind of like years, 18 months? Mm. Uh, I haven't really paid the biggest attention to it, but I have heard, like, how they pulled him on the last card he was supposed to fight, was it Verdun or Tybora, one of those guys. And, it's been uh, weird. Like, I talk about it with my friends and teammates. And, uh, I feel for him. I, I feel like he's done so much for combat sports as a whole, especially in MMA and the UFC. He should, he should be able to ask for, like, I want to, he's like Michael Jordan. He's like a Charles Barkley. Like, he's a legend. He should be able to ask for whatever he wants to. So, um, Do you have any memories that stick out to you just coming up, watching Mark Hunt kind of do everything he did in Japan? Um, I watched a lot of his highlights. Uh, I can't give you specific names. I don't have the best MMA name recognition history. But uh, I watched a lot of his highlights where he comes dropping guys. I, I know he's got like, nasty over him, nasty uppercuts. And um, it's going to be fun. Like, I can already see it now, like me, like slipping the uppercut in my head, thinking, oh my God, I just slipped Mark Hunt's uppercut. So there's a lot of that. But uh, it's still a job. I still have to go out there and win. That's what I expect to do. Is it, is it kind of surreal just like having to face someone like yeah. that? Yeah. I, like I said, I didn't think about it, but now that I do think about it, I am pretty close to the Verdums, the Overeems, the Ben Rothwell. I'm, I'm literally right there. So I have to kind of get over the uh, surrealism of it and just take it as a fight, which I am. Why would you not expect it? Your last four fights. Uh, I was, I was asking, I wasn't asking for top five. I wasn't looking at yet. I was asking for Tybora, uh, Alexander Volkov, or Derek Lewis, which are they're still good guys. They're still names. They're not like Mark Hunt or anything. Right. So I wasn't even expecting him. How do you feel about going to Australia? Uh, it wasn't on my bucket list, but it's cool. <laughs> Why not? So far away, I, I'm not. Like, I'm so big. I'm not even a big fan of flying. Even flying here, I even flight from Denver, my knees are gonna hurt. So I'm not really looking forward to the flight. But the experience, I'm looking forward to. Will you fly business or first for that one? <laughs> the UFC's looking for it, so I'm hoping as long as I get IOC, HL IOC, that's all I'm looking for. Please. <laughs> <laughs> or emergency. Oh, emergency. Just something where I don't have to. How, how how much time in advance are you giving yourself there? I will be leaving. This is where it gets confusing. I know there. I will be leaving 
the Friday prior. Okay. So that's the second in a row live in Australia on that Sunday. So I have a full week exactly. Like, Some people believe that you have to leave a day for every uh, hour of the time zone difference. So like let's say they're you know thirteen hours ahead of where you live and you have Especially. to leave thirteen days. That's what the science says. How, do you think that Friday is enough time? Yeah, I think if I I've I've spoken to um, my coach uh, Donnie, Cody Donovan. He um, he fought in Australia um, two or three times. I've spoken to Neil Magny, who's back tonight he's in Australia. They said that a week's enough. So I won't, if I did lose, I wouldn't blame them on not having enough. I'm kind of happy. That's, we had the uh, the UFC featuring press conference yesterday, and I think the general consensus is um, Francis and Garner versus Miocic. That title fight is probably the most anticipated heavyweight title fight we've had in years. A, would you agree with that? Uh, and what do you think about that fight? I do agree. Uh, this is I'm very interested in the fight. Uh, I think I was surprised how Alistair approached it like early in the fight, like him being so ready and eager to just exchange which is kind of what he got to like the way he wants to do just slug it out but he's very he only, only takes one so i was surprised that he would engage like him with, like that i don't think stephen would do the same i think he'll be more smart uh, i think he'll look to tie him up on the cage tie him out i think he'll look to drag it into third or fourth fifth rounds that's how he that's how he wins he doesn't win He wants to win. He can't get caught. Is that who you're picking? Do you think? Yeah, I think so. But either way, it's good news for me. If Ghana wins, then I'm the only guy who's who's taking Ghana to second round. Uh, if he loses, then I get, I'm closer to that rematch. I know your last fight. You weren't the, the happiest. It was kind of a weird stoppage. You know. Has there been an extra desire for you to get back in there and kind of erase that fight and, and put on a, a really good performance? No, I knew I was going to win the fight. Um, to be honest, I couldn't care less what fans or Hawkins critics say. Uh, I won that fight. Anyone think otherwise, that's their opinion. I don't feel I have to prove anything. But I am excited to fight in February. It has nothing to do with my uh, performance. How do you prepare for a guy like Mark Hunt? I know a lot of fighters like him out there, so do you do anything special for him? Uh, I'm just working on timing because we all know this. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he has an extremely precise timing. So I'm more so just focus on uh, not being like a stagnant, like just being in one place and giving him an easy target to hit. With all the distractions you've had, you know, outside of the cage, do you think this is the perfect time to be fighting Mark Hunt? I, I actually haven't really thought about the distractions as a plus for me, but I, I guess they could be. But regardless, uh, it's going to be a tough fight. I, I know he's a veteran. He's not going to bring any outside nonsense into the cage. He's got to fight with it. So am I. In a strange way, do you, do you think it was almost like, I don't want to say beneficial, but maybe beneficial for you to get Francis so early in your career and kind of get that maybe that first UFC loss out of the way. And we didn't know then what we know about him now. It doesn't look like a bad loss at all. Mm, that's one way to put it, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm not ever going to have about a loss. Uh, yeah. I feel like had I debuted and I had my training camp out of uh, Denver, it would have been much different. But that's not a hit or there. I'm not going to whine over it. But uh, maybe. Could be a good thing. I could get the loss out of the way. It did. It did spur me to move up to that little Denver, so maybe it could be seen as a good thing. Thank you. 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 You know, whenever you come away with a victory and get this game at this level, I mean, I'm happy. All good, you know, all good. So it feels like we see that we last saw you in uh, April, right? Yes, months. <coughs> Do you want to be more consistent in 2018? Is 
Uh, yeah, I want to stay more consistent, you know, it's just everything, you know, health and personal all that stuff, you know, aside, and, you know, if I'm, if I'm health, healthy and I'm able to, like, train and prepare the way I should, yeah, I want to, I want to stay more active. It's, uh, you know, this game is just very, uh, what, what's the word, consuming? Or, you know, like, when you got a girl, like, your girl takes up a big portion of your, of your life, that's how this game is. It's like a wife, man. It's like, when you're in it, you got to focus all on it or not be in it, you know, so... As long as I'm able to do that, be married to it and stuff, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to stay more active. What are some of the other things that are sort of taking you away from? Uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't like, like, dwelling in the past and whatnot, bringing up old, old shit, but, uh, you know, some, some training stuff, uh, moving, had my kid, uh, my, my, my first son, me and my girl, um, getting adjusted to being a dad, and, uh, honestly, it's just, like, my whole life I just trained and fought, and, uh, like the last couple of years, I kind of like had to put training aside and kind of grow up as a person, like as a kid and become more of a man. And I had to get rid of some people that were around me and all that, and kind of like take four steps back, and take eight steps forward. That, that was tough. So that was nice. What else? Became a dad. I became a dad like uh, June 29th. Oh, yeah. How 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 is life as as a father and how is that changed? Uh, life as a father is awesome, man. Like, like at first, like when my girl told me, I was like three or four wait, weeks away from fighting Charles Oliveira, and I came home, and my girl was like, what, what's up with you, you know? <laughs> and she was just like, all weird stuff, and I was like, oh shit, like, is everything okay? Like, somebody died or something? She's like, I'm pregnant, and I was just like, like, well, what do you mean? And I, at, at first I said, I was like kind of reacting, and I was like, wait, hold up, this is one of those moments in life, you know, where you gotta be like, be all right, like, babe, yes, we're gonna get through this, but I, I was scared shitless, you know, I was scared, and uh, since, since I had Mac, my son, you know, I've kind of, kind of gotten, like, adjusted to where, like, I can still fight and have a son, because I, I honestly was never planning on having a kid until I was done fighting, so it, it, it was, it was a tough adjustment for me. Honestly, I just made, I made it tougher than it had to be, like, I was just scared, nervous, you know, but stronger man for it, my son's a G. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He's like a little, little boy, dude. He plays with swords and guns all day, so it's all right. So like six months. He's, he's a year, year and six months. A year or last? Like, yeah, last, last year. year. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all. laughs> yeah. What's it like being back at Alliance? It's awesome, awesome. Uh, I got Jeremy Stevens. He's fighting a couple of weeks. He was like main training partner for me. Me and Eric were, were jamming. Eric Del Fiero, all camp man, just putting in work, uh, grinding. Just, uh, just really, just really living it, man. And uh, the team's awesome. San Diego's awesome as always. So going into this fight, I really felt like best shape. Um, you know, Lions is where I need to be, and uh, that's where I'm at now. So it, it's awesome. You mentioned there were people around you that I, I guess weren't good for you. Is this the change that you kind of needed on a personal level to be able to get back into focus for uh, everything that you do as a fighter? Well, you know, like, the, the people, I'm not going to say who it was, but there were some people that, that you guys wouldn't guess, like, unless I straight up told you, um, that I need to get it kind of away from me. And uh, as far as, like, 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 look, I'm a fighter, you know, like, I, in my mind, if I have to, I'll, I'll train by myself and fight. Like, that, that's just, like, as a fighter, that's what you do. But sometimes I'm so stubborn, I try to do shit on my own, that I, like, to cut myself short, so I do really believe this is where I need to be training with with Eric and the Lions, guys like Jeremy Stevens and stuff like that. And uh, honestly, it, it was kind of crazy how it all happened. Like it wasn't anything planned that how I got back to the Lions. Like I was at Jeremy Stevens' wedding. Like what was that? Two, three, three, four months ago or something. And uh, we, we were just getting married, dude, and, I, and we were just all, you know, getting after it, drinking and shit. And, uh, and, and I haven't talked to Eric in like two years at this time, you know. And he was at the wedding. I was like, oh, you know, like I didn't say anything to him. We were drinking. We just ran into each other. And uh, we were just like, hey, you know, how is everything? Cool, cool. And uh, one thing led to another, and I was just like, hey, man, like, you know, we got this hash shit out. We had a good talk. Um, and, I, and he was just like, you know, like, dude, you're more than welcome. And I was like, bro, I'll fight uh, fucking Rick Glenn in like nine weeks or something at the time with, with the work. And I was like, you got time for me? And he was like, yeah, let's get it. And I flew out there like the next week. And we just, wow, started training. And, Getting it, man. Like I said, 
I, I've been grinding after this. Jeremy came out, out with me for this fight. I'm going to uh, St. Louis in a couple of weeks for him. So that's what we do. This, this is what we do. That's it. Do you, do you feel like this is a more permanent thing for you now moving forward? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, I can't predict the future. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, I can get taken out of my car or whatever. But as far as, like, what we got going on right now with Alliance and, and, and the momentum and the work ethic that we're putting in and, like, and all that, like, yeah, th this is where I'd like to uh, finish my, uh, my competitive career. So for Glenn's a, a big man, a big win, back-to-back, uh, -back really looking really good at Featherweight. Do you feel like you've earned a top-ranked guy for your next one? You know, like, okay, look at this. Uh, when I lost uh, those two fights in a row, I, I, was, I was messed up because I was looking at this title. Like, before I fought Cerrone, I was like, I'm going to beat Cerrone. I'm going for a title. I'm going for a title. When I lost to Cerrone, I couldn't, I was just like, my mind couldn't comprehend shit because I was like, no, like, that was supposed to be, should be fighting for a title now. And I was taking steps backwards. So, like, as far as, like, your question, like, do I deserve this or do I deserve, deserve a top-ranked opponent, whatever, like, I, we'll, we'll see what UFC wants to do. You know, like, I'm 29. Just, you know, have some patience. I'm getting better. I'm getting, uh, getting stronger. And uh, if a top rank opponent comes, if a title shot comes, whatever, man. Like, I'm, I'm not going to chase it. Like, everybody wants, of course, I want, I, want, I want gold. I want the belt, right? I want the belt. I want the money. I want all that stuff, right? But, I mean, everybody wants that. And I can't focus on that. That shit's going to come as a byproduct of me training, me taking fights, me, me serving. UFC, me serving the fans. When I serve the people in, in my, my company, that's when shit gets money and all that stuff comes back. It's like the card of the world, give and receive. So I'm going to do that. So keep giving, keep working hard, and uh, it's all going to come to me. Just living in the moment. That's it. Well, this first year in April, uh, you were very, um, I guess, honest about the state of MMA and trash talking and how you didn't like the way the sport was going and evolving. How do you feel about it April 3rd? Was it the same? Uh, well, you know, honestly, you might have caught me at a bad, a bad time. But sometimes I get pissed off, and like, <laughs> and like, honestly, like, it, I, I, I respect people that, that like, you know, speak your mind, be, be who you are. Like, you know, if you want to be like the Diaz brothers, you know, and you want to have like that type of personality, cool. But I just feel like you don't have to kind of be fake with what you do. So that's, I guess, like, when you see people trying to uh, be people that they're not, I don't like that. But uh, you know, I. I don't have anything against the, the shit talking. Like you see people that do it, and they get bigger contracts, and they get stuff out of it, right? Like I can't hate him, oh. man, because you know he's leaning into the show business part and uh, and, and getting money for him and his family. Like I, I can't hate on that. Um, so I'm, I'm cool with the trash talking. If people are gonna do it, do it. It's just uh, just don't look stupid doing it because you know if, if you're fake, then people aren't dumb. You know what I'm saying? People aren't dumb. People can tell. Who's genuine and who's not. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Just being at a UFC event, you kind of feel like you belong here. Uh, well, I absolutely 100% belong in the UFC. Uh, I know that I am one of the best, if not the best, 135er in the world, especially on my best day. And so I know that I belong in the UFC. Uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity with Invicta, uh, main event, UFC Fight Pass an opportunity to again prove why I should be here uh, with the organization that has the highest of the high in terms of talent and uh, I, I feel great being at events helping coach in the corner uh, but also just being in the cage is, is where I belong. Why aren't you in the UFC? You know that I'm not sure. I think partially when I fought in the UFC in the past I didn't have my best performances. I didn't show up and that's the name of the game is show up Put yourself out there, have exciting fights. And my first start of the career was, you know, I think eight finishes in a row. And I need to get back to that. And that's why January 13th, that's what's happening. Tani is ready to come in. She's a striker. I clearly like to strike. And this is an opportunity for me to shove in everyone's face who Sarah Kaufman is. Happy Canadian, killer in the cage. Do you take this opportunity as a, as a chance of being a chance to get back? Or are you not even at uh, this stage of my career, of course, the UFC has the top talent. They have so many females to challenge yourself with every day that you have the opportunity to get in there. But I'm ready at this stage of my career to fight for myself, to fight for, to 
which is why I can be the best. I don't care who I'm fighting as long as I perform at my abilities. And that is where the belt should be. And I know that probably 18 months from now, I'm going to definitely be back in the UFC and in title contention. How is uh, Invicta treating you at the moment behind the scenes? Invicta's great. Uh, I've always, I mean, I've worked with Shannon Knapp at Strike Force, and through Invicta, I fought for them once before. And this opportunity, she's been great. She's put me as the main event. So it means she has a lot of faith in my skills and my ability to to, to kind of hold a main event on a fight pass card. And, and I think that says a lot uh, for, for how she feels about me and also just trying to push women forward and give everyone opportunities. You're fighting Swedish fighter Penny Kinsad. Could you give us a little bit of your thoughts about her as a fighter? I don't know a ton about Penny. I've watched her last three fights. Um, but she's had kind of long breaks as well from her last fight to now. So I'm sure a lot's changed, but she brings a lot of excitement. She likes to, to throw with her hands and it kind of has that powerful style when she uses her strike. So it presents a really fun matchup for a main event, uh, for myself as a fighter, as well as for the fans to watch at home. Sarah, you alluded to has been a very hot topic over the past week or so. But for women, it's a different kind of ballgame because there aren't that many options outside of UFC. Bellator is trying to get into it a little bit. Invicta, uh, I know you went overseas. But what is it like being a female mixed martial artist who tests the food and water, so to speak? What's that experience like? Uh, I'm not going to lie, it has not been great. Uh, the fight in Korea against Jesse Rose Park, who's now in the UFC. Uh, was great. I mean, the opportunity to fight, the potential to get paid, but then we didn't get paid. So I still have not got paid. I talked to Jesse today when we were training. She is still not, still hasn't seen any money. A penny. Not a penny. Wow. Yeah, out of pocket for sure for for that fight. But I had a couple other opportunities throughout the year, and they just kept falling through. One fell through three days before. One fell through a couple weeks before, and it's definitely been very frustrating. Uh, partially, I think because of my skill level. There are not a lot of girls willing to step up and fight me. In the UFC, the big issue I think was there weren't girls stepping up to fight me. I was clawing and scratching and trying to put my name out there for any opportunity. Uh, and my name never would come up because people would just say no to the fights. And so I think that's also been part of the, the issue in fact, trying to find fights outside of the UFC is because girls say no when they hear Sarah Coffey. Have you given up on giving up I mean, I love money, so yeah. I would still like to get it. The money from Korea. From Korea, Korea, I understand, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. Okay. I mean, I like all money, yes, but yes. the money that I worked for and earned and put my body on the line for, uh, I've tried to contact them, but they they kind of kept in contact for maybe till like July, August, and I haven't heard from them since. Wow. Has anyone got a pay for the card? Yes, yeah, some people did. Oh, wow. um, part of the card got paid, and then they ran out of money, and then just, sorry, wow. we're in Korea. So at least now there's something a little more stable where you can go and get invested. Yeah. In, in fact, I know I'm going to get paid. I know I'm going to get a fight opportunity. Um, they've been really good. I actually originally had a different opponent. And then we got Penny maybe two weeks ago. So I'm just happy to have an opponent and one who's game and willing to step in the cage and put herself on the line to let me get a win. You said you're the happy Canadian, but is it fair to say that maybe you're a little too funny for a woman to get some money? Um, you know, I actually feel like I have less of a chip on my shoulder. I think in the past I was frustrated. Uh, I mean, when Rhonda had the belt, I had already fought Rhonda. So I feel like a lot of the opportunities weren't there because they were trying to get new people for Rhonda. And then when Holly won, and then Misha, and now Amanda, I think it's really opened up the landscape at 135. And the UFC needs bantamweights. They need exciting bantamweights. And so my goal, January 13th, is to remind people that I am the exciting bantamweight that they need. I'm not just a bantamweight, I'm the exciting bantamweight. And that's what I need to do January 13th. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for giving me a buffet? Or yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yep. Unless he feeds himself. No. <laughs> He's okay. Getting out is good. He said that he still like not <coughs> realized what happened, but that was a long way because the first fight got canceled and stuff like that. So it 
So let's say, <coughs> does it mean that it, it feels surreal that he's got a win in the UFC? That it, it's just it's hard to process at this point. Nie wiem, no, że, kurde, co, dlaczego do mnie nie dochodzi, bo jest to bardzo duże wydarzenie i wiadomo, że miałem tam wiarę w to, że wygram, no ale nie wiedziałem, że zrobię to aż w taki sposób, że po prostu zdominuję Kajla na wszystkich płaszczyznach, no i to, to mnie najbardziej cieszy i dlatego to nie dochodzi do mnie. It's, it's still hard to believe what happened because uh, uh, that's a big day for me uh, in my life and of course I, I was believing in myself and my abilities to win this fight but I have uh, no clue that I'm, I will do this so dominant uh, style and I will uh, beat Khalil everywhere like in standing wrestling and, and on the ground. I read that um, him winning would be a decision uh, as far as the odds makers go because it's plus 1055. <coughs> a huge upset in that regard that it went the distance and he may be a decision. Is he surprised that he, not that he won, but that he won via decision? Sam wygrała przez decyzję, to było głupa również wiele za innymi prawdopodobnie chłopcy. I czy nie, nawet czy nie jesteś, nie chodzi o to, czy jesteś zaskoczony tym, że wygrałeś, ale czy jesteś zaskoczony tym, że wygrałeś przez decyzję? Szczerze powiedziawszy, czy jestem zaskoczony, może powiem inaczej, że Miałem taką nadzieję już w drugiej rundzie, że go skończę Kaj, Kajla. Myślałem, że, że on już tam po tych ciosach odpuści. No i myślałem, że to zakończę przed czasem. No, decyzja też cieszy. Myślę, że na debiut jest to bardzo dobry zawodnik i bardzo twardy na pewno. To był wielki szacunek dla niego za to, że wytrzymał trzy rundy dobrej walki. Uh, honestly, I'm surprised that I did not finish that one in the second round. I was pretty sure that in the second round I got him and I can finish him and But he's a very tough guy and respectful too because he, he took a lot and he was there in a fight. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I think that for a, for a debut, I, I thought that I would have a finish, but decision, I think that decision for a debut isn't a, isn't a bad thing, especially uh, against uh, such opponent as Khalil. Well, so, but you had a couple of names already on your mind for <coughs> who you'd like to face next, one of them being Saki. Any particular reason? Uh, Powód jest bardzo prosty, ponieważ to jest legenda sportów uderzanych K1 i ja się nie boję żadnych wyzwań i to by był dla mnie zaszczyt skrzyżować rękawice z takim sportowcem. No i szczerze podaję wygrane, jest to bardzo prawdopodobne i, i co? I jestem na taką walkę na pewno gotowy. Przy dobrym przygotowaniu się mogę przebić, można powiedzieć, z każdym, bo żadnej walki nie odrzucę. I want to fight Gokhan Saki because he's a legend. He's like legendary striker and kickboxer, and that would be an honor to to enter a cage with him. <coughs> and I'm pretty sure that I can face him. And I think that's a good fight to to make right now after this one. So I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that will happen. I think that while in, sh in shape and after good camp, I can fight any light heavyweight in the world, and I will prove that in the next fights. What's been the experience uh, fighting here in Las Vegas this week? Jakie to może się doświadczenie ten tydzień w Las Vegas i walka tutaj? No, organizacja jest świetna, no, na, mnie, na mnie zrobiła wielkie wrażenie i to świetne przeżycie pracować z takimi ludźmi, którzy tutaj dbają o nas i, i nie musimy się o nic martwić. No, świetna organizacja, świetni ludzie, świetni kibice, no, aż chce się toczyć kolejną walkę jak najszybciej. Uh, the, the biggest surprise for me here and uh, the, the nicest thing is, is the UFC as a promotion itself, the, the way how it's everything organized and the way how people treat you here, how nice they are, how, how helpful they are, how everything is handled like in the in the minutes and like in, in, everything is like covered. And that's like that's like the biggest difference between fighting in the UFC and, and anywhere uh, else. So uh, I want to pay, pay back UFC with a good fight and, and hopefully I'm doing this. The first uh, European card of 2018 is going to be in London and there's obviously a massive Polish community in London. Is that a card that interests him? Marzec 2018 w Londynie jest dużo Polaków, bo jest też w marcu 2018, czy to by się interesowało? Marcu. Myślę, że tak, jeśli ze zdrowiem wszystko jest ok i, i będę mógł wrócić do treningów jak najszybciej, no to czemu nie? Można, można się bić i nie ma problemu. Yeah, I don't have any health issues after that one, I'm feeling fine, so I can be back to the training uh, straight, straight after coming back to Poland in January, so why not? It's, uh, it's enough time to prepare myself and I'm, I'm open to 
do any offers uh, to fight in London? And how are you going to celebrate the winter fight? Yeah, yeah we're just going to uh, uh, say jutro. Zawsze sobie powtarzam po walce, że będę hucznie świętował, ale zawsze wychodzi tak, że idę spać, bo jestem zmęczony. Także nie wiem, no na pewno coś tam poświętujemy, ale bez szaleństw. After after every win, I'm I'm telling to myself that this time I will go and, and party hard, but I'm usually so tired after the fights that I'm I'm just going to sleep. And hopefully this time we will have a party here in Vegas, but we will see what will, what will happen. Just curious, after the fight, Open Saki tweeted, if you prepare for me like this, you die. And it's unclear if he's talking about Roundtree or him. Uh, I'm just curious what he thinks of that statement. Maybe both of them, uh, he wasn't very impressed in the first when he first showed up. Open Saki tweeted, if you want to go to Roundtree, if you want to go to Roundtree, if you want to go to Roundtree, then you know who it was, but how did he get to that point? Do you have any questions about that? Myślę, że tutaj no, z mojej strony na pewno wyszła ta propozycja dlatego, że no bo chciałbym zawalczyć z takiego kalibru zawodnikiem i tutaj nie ma żadnej złej krwi. I tyle, no, z mojej strony to tyle, no po prostu chciałbym stopić sportową walkę bez żadnych tam podtekstów, wyzwałem go normalnie na sportową walkę, no i, i tyle. No. Uh, if that tweet was addressed to me... Uh, I just want to state that I called out Kokasaki because he's a legend. That was a sports call out that is not all about bad blood. I just want to uh, face a sports legend and uh, Kokasaki is that legend. How many switches, by the way? You don't know how to switch? Mm. I have no idea. Looks like four. Okay. <laughs> you weighed in at uh, 203 uh, yes, uh, two days ago. Um, <coughs> you, you don't cut a lot of weight or was it uh, a miscalculated weight cut? Wzięły się te 200 sekundy na wagę, nie mało wagi, czy pomyliłeś się w obliczeniach i zrobiłeś za dużo? Znaczy nie, no z, ogólnie zbijam wagę ze 105 kg, ale teraz mogę powiedzieć już po walce na spokojnie, że byłem, byłem chory na grypę tydzień przed walką, złapał mnie wirus i myślę, że to też spowodowało tak szybki spadek wagi i dlatego tyle ważyłam. Usually cut down for like 220. But now I can, uh, as it's, is it post fight? I can I can tell you that uh, I had a flu uh, like a one week before, and I, I I feel very bad. I lost a lot of weight, and that's why I uh, weigh below the limit. Cool. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Was that the Carlos Condi that you were expecting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going to this fight, I definitely thought it would be a close fight. I knew we would go strike for strike. Uh, Submission for submission, so I definitely expect to be a super close fight. Uh, that first round, let me see that the wrestling was the only way I can break away in this fight and start getting an advantage, so I ran with it. Did you expect him to be one more aggressive? Um, you just never know. I mean, uh, it's been a while since he's fought last. He had plenty of things he, he was working on. Um, I thought that what he's work was more grappling related, just based on how we fought today. He might want to go out there and show things he's grappling. Were you happy with your performance? Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. There were some things I could definitely done better, but overall, I'm happy with the performance. Like what? So uh, one thing I did like was uh, my, with my striking, I could be a little more active with it and push forward a little bit more. But uh, at the same time, I need a little caution not to get caught being too aggressive. Were you surprised at all by you know, the way he fought? Did he seem like he was rusty at all? Because, I mean, you followed his career, you know something about him. No, not at all. I mean, uh, he went out there and he, he put on a great fight. I don't think the fight was uh, as clearly decisive as it was. I think the biggest thing with the takedowns was, was, was separated the fight, but he, he seemed like no power scam to me, <laughs> you were allowed to try to put it on. <laughs> you, uh, you seem to catch the low kick a lot. Is that something you knew was coming or is that something you just reacted to in the fight? Um, so that's something I knew a lot of guys were game plan against me. I mean, uh, since the Reza Larkin pointed out, everyone's been attacking that lead leg. So I, if I were fighting me, I'd kick the hell out of that front leg too. So uh, I expect that it would be something that his uh, coach put in his game plan. What do you think this will take from you now? Um, I have no idea what it takes me now. I mean, I'm waiting for the phone calls to come in Monday morning and see who's next. <laughs> How are you going to celebrate this big win? Oh man, this is going to celebrate my uh, fiance, friends, and family are in town this weekend. I mean, uh, it's been a long year for my family and I, so it goes out this win with a big win. It goes out this year with a big win. It feels amazing. Carlos. He's probably going to go help somebody is what he's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone that needs it. <laughs> Carlos can be very dangerous off his, off his back at times. Did you ever? 
feel threatened when you run. Uh, uh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, this literally position we drilled in practice over and over and over. And we got to the point that I was really like, Coach, I'm done with the guard. I'm done doing these elbows on the top. I'm done controlling the wrist. Let me do something else. So uh, my coach prepared me for every aspect of this fight, so I didn't see anything that surprised me out there. The catching the skates, is that something you started training more at the Larkin fight, or is Larkin just an off night? Uh, no, he definitely pointed something out with the low kicks. He uh, uh, just, I mean, he did his homework. He pointed it out, and every guy that fought since then has been attacking that lead leg. So uh, I knew it was something that they would, they would put in their game plan when they're getting ready to fight me. So um, I just have to adapt to it and get better. I can't allow my leg to get kicked out and not do anything about it. So I was ready to counter and, and uh, make him pay for every leg kick he threw. This is a uh, con that was sort of talking about walking away before this fight. Now you've been in there with him and he, he came away. Do you want him to continue? Do you think he should, or do you think perhaps he's more? Um, it's not true. That, that's not a decision for him to make. I mean, this week I had one of my closest friends retire from the sport named Marquardt. And um, it, it, when, you walk, when you choose to walk away from the sport, it's something that's entirely up to you and your family. And uh, it just, it's not my place to decide. I mean, I wish him the best whatever he decides to do. If it's to, uh, to keep him fighting or if it's to, to hang him up, I just wish him the best whatever he does. But it's not my place to choose what he does next. Are you expecting him to have to? Um, not at all. I mean, the, to come back after a year and a half off, I mean, I feel like the guy had something to prove and he wanted to go out there and do just that. Um, Sorry, I meant Mark Park. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we talked about that a little <laughs> bit this week. So I, I kind of I knew a little bit of insight before the, uh, the rest of the media knew. Okay. And you mentioned that it was a long year for your family. What, what did you mean by that? Earlier <laughs> uh, uh, this year, uh, my brother was killed, so uh, I've been dealing with that a lot uh, this year. So it's just been something that I just kind of try to hold in and not really show much. Just like reached out to my family, showing for guys that look up to me. So um, as much as it affects me, I try not to show it uh, day to day and affect me in any kind of way. And when did that happen? Uh, that happened in October this year. Oh, wow. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Oh, uh, that's fine. Right. Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This year was a pretty tough year for you. Uh, you had fights that had to be scheduled and visa problems. How, how did you handle it? I handled it good. Like it's, everything is part of the game. Injuries, everybody got injuries. I don't gonna, I'm not going to sit and cry and complain about it. Now I got through it, now I'm better, now I'm healthy, now we're going to fight. And that's all I can care about. And you've been here in Vegas for about a month. Yeah. Are you enjoying the city? I love it. It's uh, I live just next to the PI. I've been there every day, twice a day. Working with my team, took a bunch of Norwegian crazy fucking Vikings and coming over and just having fun, training hard, uh, getting working over at Extreme Couture and some of the guys over there. And Kevin Liu helped me a lot with the wrestling, and it's, it's been really good. How come you are on the St. Louis card and not the two final? Was yeah, that you have to ask, yeah, you have to ask Dana White about that. I have uh, no idea. I, I signed the contract with uh, 220 and they moved it to St. Louis. I don't know why. Even Ariel got it wrong. Even yes. Ariel. <laughs> What went into your decision to come out to Las Vegas? Um, mostly because I was supposed to fight there. I was supposed to fight with this card and um, to get uh, rid of the jet lag, which uh, which is a uh, like serious problem if you don't take it seriously enough, um, and uh, to get better training. And in uh, Norway, when it's holidays, it's hard to get proper training. In. But uh, over here, the training goes all year round, and uh, it's better training part. Or it's a lot of really good, talented training partners here. Uh, so it's yeah, it, I feel really, really, really sharp here. Since you're a UFC legend, you you have been calling around a lot of top ranked opponents, <laughs> and now the final they have the chance to face a top fifteen guy. In How does sure. that feel? It feels uh, it feels really right. Uh, it, feel, it feels fun, and like I said before, it's uh, one of those fights that makes me want to get up in the morning and, and work my fucking ass off until I pass out. It's, it's like everything that I have in mind, I don't want to do anything that can damage that thing. I'll be at Winter Festival holidays on, uh, on January 14th. Do you have a big uh, fan base in, in, in Scandinavia and in Norway? Uh, and they like to stay How does it feel to have the support from Norway? Yeah, it's really important to support. It's, uh, it's you know, it, you fight for yourself, but you also fight for the guys that's rooting for you. And to to have that kind of support through shit and through hell and through pain and injury and all that stuff, it is uh, 
means that these true fans like support like the uh, what's it called the people that fucking root for you when you win. That's everybody's rooting for you when you win. That's the one you you still rooting for you when you when you lose. You heads down and everything. That's the one that really matters. Talk about what you're wearing today. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this little piece. This is just like, can you see the whole tip? It's just, it's just my, this is just my supporter jersey. I just made it. Fucking awesome. This is me. This is Valhalla. This is my sponsor. This is my logo. And, uh, you know, this is, yeah. I made them to wear for fights. So people can go to the fights, wear this shit, and then they can see, like, who they're teaming up with. Like who they gonna drink beer with after, and who they gonna scream my name with together. You have one of those big axes in the states, or is it at home? Oh, it's still cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I tried to order one with Amazon, but <laughs> it, and it looks really cool on online. And I got it in the mail. It was like this big, and it was rubber. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't use that. Well, you got the post post photo. Yeah, I'm just a little <laughs> baby ass. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Thank Thanks, you guys. Good. Thank you. Congrats, Dan. How happy are you with uh, that performance, and how closely did that play out to how you thought the fight would go? Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of how when you, you play these exciting guys, they, uh, he's explosive and very dangerous. So I gave him, gave him time. Uh, to, 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 you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't rush anything. That's when you get silly and get caught. He's got a good, good knockout punch. He's got a lot of knockouts. Very dangerous guy. So you have to give dangerous guys the respect they deserve. Are you surprised that he still had it? It looked like even in the third round, he still had a lot left in the gas tank. Did you think that he would maybe burn out a little bit before then? Uh, well, you know, I won the first and second, so I was expecting him to come out very explosive in the third round because he's playing catch-up, of course. And he's trying to, he's, he's got to get a finish in that round, get a 10-8 round. So I, I expected him to push the pace. So I, I started trying to just time something and stay relaxed. And, Knew the opportunity would come. He took a lazy shot, and that's when I snatched his neck. You guys were you were very respectful there at the end. You went over and looked like you, you know, thanked him for the fight. But you know, at the the, the weigh-ins and and that sort of thing, it looked like things got a little heated. Did that kind of fire you up for the fight and maybe want make you want to go in there and make a point out? Oh, uh, well, that's kind of, that's what he wanted, right? Like he he was just trying to he was just trying to go me. Um, I like to brawl. That's like I like to brawl. You know, so you gotta you gotta avoid that. Uh, my coaches just told me that I'm I'm better than that. You know, that's just something I enjoy, but but I'm better than that. Can't give them that fight when I'm when I'm the better fighter. You know, I'm more skilled, more disciplined. So I, I kept my cool. You know, and he's just it's just gamesmanship. You know, he's he's young. I don't hold anything against him. I went up to him straight after. I said just all respect. Uh, I under, I've been around this game a long time, so I know that that. Exciting fighters need other exciting fighters, and, and, and high-level fighters need other high-level fighters. So, so he's just, you know, he's just doing his thing to sell the fight. Uh, but, but I'm not gonna. I just do my thing. I just do me. So that's that's just me. So on this first show of the week, you know, you talked about how the one thing that you've been missing so far in your career in the UFC was consistency and, and putting a run together. What do you think has been the, you know, the difference in these last couple of fights? For you? Yeah, it's just my, you know, 45 kind of took my venom, kind of took, took that, 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 that killer instinct, uh, took, my, took my ability to think and be technical. Um, you know, now, now at, at 55, I'm, I'm, I'm me. You know, this is, this is me. I, I expected to go into all these other fights, you know, but I had to learn the hard way. No one held a gun to my head and said, you have to make 55. I, I chose that. I did it to myself. So you never make the same mistake twice. You I make it. I make it five times just to be sure. You, you obviously mentioned the first card. Um, you know, are you confident you can get it? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You can jump on that card. Of course, now I'm gonna get fed in this game. I'm my ass, man. Like I got teammates on that card. Uh, Marks on that card. Rob's defending his belt. Um, that's that's. Get me on that card, man. Like <laughs> I want on. Do you care who your opponent is, or you? Want someone, you know, that's just, that's just matter, you know. Up, down, left, right, it's all the same thing. Um, six weeks is a quick turnaround, so I'm, I'm not waiting for any man. It's kind of first in, first serve. You know, if you want the fight, message Sean, and we'll put it together. I'll sign it tomorrow. Yeah, six weeks enough uh, for to just to get your weight back and cut it down again? Yeah, well, at 55, I don't cut the weight, so I kind of, I 
to do it again tomorrow. Like, I'm not, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <coughs> Going back to this fight, talk us through that finish. Is that something that you thought that his fight style would lead into it? If he, if he... No, he just, he, he just got put under pressure and, had to, he, and he took a lazy shot. Uh, that choke, that's my second finish with that choke in the UFC. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, everyone's got things that their body type is good at. It's just, that's just something I'm good at. I know it's, you said it's your second time, but once you lock it in, you know it was done for, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, once I know, once you know, you know. You know, like, I, I snatched it up quick. I had it on tight. I knew I was going to finish. And I heard, heard it was a bit slow on the take. Uh, you, can't, you can't stop when, the, when your opponent taps. You've got to stop when the ref comes. You've mentioned, obviously, you've been around for a long time. You're a veteran of the sport. And, like, someone like Mark Casey, you know, big prospect coming out of the UK. Uh, and now, you know, he's stumbled a little bit. You know, a couple of back-to-back -back losses now. If you were able to kind of speak to him uh, in terms of giving him some advice, what would you say to him right now? Yeah, I've been lucky that I learned like a lot of hard lessons before I got to the UFC. You know, I started my pro career and I dedicated my life to the sport when I was three and three. When I was three wins, three losses as a professional. That's I, I went, I said I'm done. You know, I was three wins, three losses and I said I'm done with this sport, I hate it, I'm over it. I went and got a I went and got a sales job. I was there one day, I knocked on one door. The guy was rude to me, I wanted to punch him, and I said, I'm going back to the gym. I said, I'm done. I'm going back to training, and that's that's the moment I dedicated my life to the sport. But uh, I, I've learned my hard lessons outside of the UFC. So he's he's learning them inside the UFC. He, he's, he's a talented kid, and, and he will come back from this if he wants to. You know, he picked himself back up. He's a very dangerous guy, very talented, and uh, the, the, you know, the world is his oyster. He can, he can get back in there. Are you celebrating New Year's in Vegas, or are you gonna be on a plane when you leave? No, I'm staying. I'm staying for one day after. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll probably train tomorrow. My teammates got a. He's fighting in Perth. Israel Adesanya. He's uh, making his debut in Perth. So uh, we gotta get a training session in tomorrow. So I'll be up to the. You know, they got free lunch out at the Free Eye. I'm down there. Yeah. <laughs> That's Kiwi, brother. Can't have, can't have too much for free hanging out here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, nice Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.